Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. A quick shout out to at Teaser for the super thanks. I greatly appreciate it, man. And um, it really warms my heart. So thank you very much. Today's video is about our dreaded topic, diesels versus steam locomotives. Enjoy. Okay, so I did the Zephyr video yesterday with a reason uh, to set up this particular topic, which I sus suspect is going to be highly more viewed than the Zephyr video. But if you've not seen the Zephyr video, uh, please watch it because it is actually a very solid video, in my opinion, and it's worthwhile watching in its own right. Okay, and following up to that Zephyr video... Uh, an important evolutionary development came in 1939. Electromotive introduced its FT Freight locomotive, a 5,400 horsepower, four-unit streamlined diesel electric. The FT, unfortunately, was no gimmick and was not a fad. It was a very real locomotive. Before the EMC demonstrated the FT to the railroads, it worked out most of the serious bugs. So the FT pleased its promoters and demonstrated the superior qualities as a locomotive. It matched or outperformed steam in virtually every situation in which it was tried. Now, I've seen that repeated over and over again in many publications, and personally, I find that very hard to believe. Maybe in financials, as far as that goes, you know, cost to operate and things like that. But sheer uh, pulling power and whatnot, I don't think so. I mean, geez, I'm barely into this video and I'm already fired up about it. But seriously, folks, if that was the case, then why in the heck do you have to triple head and quadruple head and have uh, diesel pushers all the time, back, especially back in those days when steam, I mean, you had the double head and whatnot, but those are on some serious grades. So, again, I highly dispute that fact, especially back then, uh, of diesel performance. But obviously, diesel is far cheaper than steam to operate. So, you have to give it that much. But to have diesels, you know, make a statement that it outperforms steam, I don't think so. So, let me know in the comments below what you think about that statement alone. And we barely just got started, as I mentioned. However, we do know, know of some railroads that this response was not universal. Some lines didn't run the FT at all, but many railroads did and were soon convinced. And to me, that's just wanting, them wanting to save a dollar. But anyhow, to those railroads, the FT was just a locomotive they were looking for. To those railroads, the FT was clean, it was efficient, and it was powerful. So by 1940, the diesel electric had demonstrated its superiority over conventional steam it offered many of the advantages of electrification at a much better price and without the upfront cost of overhead wire and electric power plants. The steam locomotive was doomed, of the opinion of many railroads and, of course, EMC. Now, just to be clear here, it was very obvious that diesel was much cheaper to run than steam, and that's what the railroads were really after. But don't tell me performance-wise that diesels were outperforming steam because that's just not the case. But I do agree with the notion that dieselization was cheaper than electrification. That much I definitely agree with. And I do agree that the steam locomotive was doomed, but not because of performance, but rather cost. So, just as it appeared that railroads were going to march ahead into the bright new world of diesel traction, along came one last chance for steam, and that was in the form of Pearl Harbor when the Japanese bombed our fleet there. And consequently, America entered World War II. So, during World War II, materials and factory output was strictly controlled by the gov government under War Production Board. One of the crucial components required in manufacturing diesel electrics was copper, a metal of great strategic importance in diesel engines that might have been used in locomotives were used in ships and submarines instead, and obviously right, rightfully so. So while Electromotive was allowed to build a few diesels, much of its production capacity was turned toward the war effort. Railroads that ordered new diesels would simply have to wait until the war was over. And as many of us railroad fans know, World War II created an enormous surge in railroad traffic, and the need for new motive power had never been greater. Traffic levels rose to easily record heights, and 10 years worth of deferred maintenance and few new locomotive deliveries during the 1930s depression complicated the motive power shortage during the war. 
To back that point here, a total of six new locomotives have been built in 1932 and just one in 1933. That's to give you an idea. Now, obviously, as the 1930s wore on and the country was coming out of depression, the railroads started uptaking new locomotive uh, designs and builds. But many of the railroads were still very hesitant to place large orders for new locomotives while traffic levels were not normal, as in on the very low side. And most railroads still had yards full of old locomotives. So when the war traffic hit, many locomotives were more than 20 years old and some were more than 40 years old. The railroads were just not prepared for the traffic and they scrambled for power. Just about any old tea kettle that could run was rebuilt and fired up. And locomotives that had been written off as scrap were reinstated to service. The War Production Board was more generous, generous with its allocation of new steam locomotives than it was for new diesel. But on the same hand, the War Production Board also frowned upon the development of new locomotive designs in general. That includes steam. So basically, builders just busted out the old blueprints instead of designing new locomotives. And of course, this applied to diesel design uh, as well. The steam builders, Alco, Baldwin, and Lima, were discouraged from developing their own road diesels to compete with Electromotives FT. Now, why that is, I do not know. But that's what many publications say. So if any of you have that information, let me know in the comments below. Because as most of us know, those three builders of steam power all went out of business so besides lima getting sued by the cno railroad this would seem to be a huge uh, principle as to why the big three steam powered manufacturers went out of business so once world war ii subsided and the restrictions were lifted american railroads were faced with a largely worn out fleet of locomotives as one might predict and they were out out of date well a few Lines such as the Chesapeake and Ohio, New York Central, the Nickel Plate Road, and Norfolk and Western ordered new steam locomotives. Most of the railroads opted for diesels. The diesel electrics advantages were undeniable, and despite the efforts to save the external combustion engine, the age of steam in the United States was nearing an end, if not over. The traditional builders of steam locomotives, Alco, Baldwin, and Lima, continued to build steam for a few years, but they all introduced diesels in their catalogs with limited degrees of success. Well, that's because they're about behind the game. Ultimately, they all went out of business. Lima and Baldwin merged and then uh, exited the new locomotive business in 1956, while Alco struggled into the late 1960s. Alco's Canadian subsidiary, Montre Montreal Locomotive Works, lasted into the 1970s. Okay, so I came across some numbers uh, as to why diesels are more efficient than steam in most categories, and I'm going to share those with you here. Again, I do not believe, uh, up until very recently, that diesels ever perform steam locomotives when it comes to actually pulling a train especially upgrades and especially against locomotives like the y6b or the allegheny or the big boy those types of super articulated i don't believe diesel ever outperformed those locomotives but it's definitely a fact that they were much cheaper to operate that much is for certain so anyhow here are the numbers and basically the superior efficiency and performance of diesel electrics versus steam was one of the diesel's initial selling points to begin with the diesel engine is a significantly more efficient heat engine than the recipro reciprocating steam engine. At optimal performance, the modern steam locomotive can theoretically produce a maximum of 12% thermal efficiency, but only 6 to 8% is the maximum achievable in actual operation. Thermal or heat efficiency is a measure of how well an engine converts its fuel to the work required. The steam engine experiences a tremendous heat loss in its firebox, boiler, and cylinders and is further hampered by inc incomplete fuel combustion. And as a side note, that would be true especially of coal, but I'm not so sure about the Bunker C fuel oil or fuel oil in general that many of the railroads went to with steam power. A diesel engine's thermal efficiency is roughly four times greater than that of a steam engine. Furthermore, a steam locomotive's optimum power output is produced at higher speed than diesels. Steam locomotives with drivers in the 69-inch range produce their maximum horsepower in the mid-40 mile an hour per hour range, while early diesels produce maximum horsepower in the 10 to 20 miles per hour range. As a result, these diesels could start a train easier than a steam locomotive could. 
And to me, that depends on what steam locomotive we're talking about. Again, a Y6B or a big boy or something like that, Allegheny, that definitely, it, in my mind, depends on horsepower and tractive effort. The diesel electric was more cost effective than steam for several reasons. Multi-unit operation, which allowed one engineer to control many diesel units, and the diesel electric's ability to start a heavy train without assistance allowed the railroads to haul more tonnage with fewer, fewer crews, thus cutting personnel cost. Railroads were also able to eliminate many short helper grades resulting in further savings that is until the development of safe remote radio controlled operation however man diesel helpers were still common practice on steep mountain grades and even with the advent of safe radio control some railroads still preferred to operate manned helpers and i know if i was an engineer i would prefer that definitely Diesel locomotive gave the railroads great flexibility in operation and provided significant simplification in motive power application. The individual diesel electric was very versatile. For years, railroads had to maintain a different type of locomotive for every application with steam. Most railroads had at least a dozen different types on the roster. For example, on the eve of dieselization, Southern Pacific was operating 17 different types of steam power with nu numerous subclasses. The diesel's ability to generate maximum power from the start eliminate, eliminated the need to match locomotive to application, and specialized designs for individual railroads were unnecessary. In the early 1940s, Electric Motive established just three basic types of diesel electrics, switcher, road freight, or road passenger. These types later evolved and the road switcher was introduced, a locomotive which was suited for a variety of tasks. There were specialty diesel electrics, but these were very few and far between and in number relative to the dominance of standard types. And simply because there were fewer and more versatile models, adoption of the diesel imposed a system of standardization that a hundred years of steam locomotive design had never been able to achieve. While some railroads, such as the Pennsylvania Railroad, had standard locomotive types and interchangeable parts, many railroads did not. Every railroad's locomotives were somewhat different, and there were often serious design differences from class to class of locomotive when dealing with steam. So folks, there you have it. Those are the major points of why dieselization took over for steam locomotives. And the one thing, again, that I will never agree with is that the diesel locomotive outperformed steam when actually doing the job, especially upgrades. However, overall cost and, and whatnot in those terms, absolutely diesel was definitely the way to go. And overall, I believe as a mainline operator anyway, that steam locomotives were rightfully phased out. But that doesn't mean that today or tomorrow or well into the future that steam cannot be resurrected because I do believe the technologies are now available to at least even up the odds and the performance when it comes to cost versus the current diesel, especially when fuel shortages are on, are on the horizon. Railroads are going to have to do something. And with that, I'll wrap up this video, and I'll end it by saying thank, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's content, please hit the like button, and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. Both help the channel grow tremendously. And also turn on all of your notifications if you want to see all of my new uploads, which are now daily, sometimes twice a day. And visit our print shop at nickelplatelimited at etsy.com if you want to support the channel in that way. And we thank you once again.